Hello guys, welcome back to Rush the Wires. My name is Miguel. I'm the local painter here, army painter, entrepreneur, and the guy who is gonna teach you how to do these easy and fast with washes. If you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to the channel. Give me a like if you enjoy the video at the end of it, or not right now, right now it's fine. So go ahead and just do it now. So the video of today is about painting white. I hope I'm saying this correctly, okay? Because it's a word that maybe for me with my Spanish accent is not gonna be very easy to pronounce. So yes, whites. Whites are my favorite unit in the whole, uh, the whole game. Whites have been, since forever, my favorite unit in Warhammer Fantasy. And the idea behind them is what compels me. They are ancient kings, ancient noblemen, ancient warriors, buried in mounds, in burial mounds, and they have been reanimated to fight for a necromancer or a vampire within their army. I love the lore behind them, and one of the most iconic um, illustrations that depicts them, I think in the best way possible, is the one from Circle of Blood, which is an expansion uh, campaign that was released during the Middle Hammer years of 5th edition. So yeah, what I try to convey in the painting here is this dark uh, brooding atmosphere but I needed to put some color on that. And one of the ways that I actually did that is by painting the weapons very similar to the one in the cover in Circle of Blood. You will see that. So if you are not that keen into painting undead, if you, it's not your jam or whatever, I don't understand why, but if it's not, this tutorial might still be of help for you. Even if you're painting orcs, you might want to learn about different ways of painting armor a little bit grittier, a little bit more, you know, with oxide and things like that. And in here I'm going to show you how to do that easy and fast with wash. Sit down, get some drinks, watch the video and enjoy. Let's get the intro in. So here we go, these are my whites. Some of them are actually Reaper Bones Mini 2s. You can find the link in the description where to find them. And then I have Krell, which is a very cool Middle Hammer miniature. And another white over there, which is also from uh, Middle Hammer era. But most of them are actually Reaper Bones. All of them, I prime them with a silver spray paint, very cheap one. And then I'm priming once again in white. Some of the parts in the miniatures are gonna paint with solid colors. I then gave a wash with three different washes. Dark Coat Flesh, Skeleton Horde, and then last but not least, Seraphine Sepia. I wanted to see if there is a big, strong difference between them. After those dry, I gave them another extra wash with Agrax Earthshade. You will notice that I only painted the metal parts and the skulls and the weapons, which if you want, you can paint with metal. I actually painted white because I wanted to create that gloomy or kind of baleful effect that you can see in the cover of Circle of Blood. After this I'll give them a dry brush with Volgan metal very slightly to create a little bit more of relief on the metal. Moving on to painting different clothes on the miniatures, I'm going to use two different shades of blue to paint some of the clothes, some of the capes, etc. Gilliman Blue will be the first one, and I'm gonna paint it without any consideration basically, just put paint on them. I'm gonna set them flat so it dries evenly. Then I'm gonna move to the purples. I'm starting with Cardboard Crimson. Yes, I know what you're asking yourself. Wait, you said you're gonna paint it with two colors on the blue. Yes, I know, I know, I know. The idea is that while the blue is drying, I'm not gonna waste time and I'm just gonna move to the next color. And now that the purple is drying, I'm gonna use this orange, Fuegan orange, to create the base for the reds. So as you can see, I'm not wasting any time here. I'm just moving on to the next paint and allowing them to dry. Back to the blue, I'm using now Ultramarines blue to paint on top of Gilliman. Because contrast paints are quite thick, they have much more pigment than regular washes, I mix a little bit of water so I can make them a little bit less thick. And that allows me to show a little bit of the underneath on Gilliman. We repeat the process with uh, Magus purple and after we're done with this color we're gonna do the same with red which is going to be blood letter.
I'm using white scar now to clean on some of the different parts of the mini tubes that I would like to paint with previous colors. So then I just repeat the process of using the blues, the orange, etc. etc. That way I make sure that they look clean and neat. So paint back with white if you have, you know, stained those. I'm gonna use now Druchi Violet. Now, in this case, I'm painting Krell's knee pads, but I'm also using it to darken the red. I apply Druchi Violet rather than Magus Purple because this is a wash, and that way I have more control on how it flows. It's not that thick. Purple goes perfect with red to improve the shading. Griff Charger, on the other hand, I'm gonna use it to create some nice black um, gloves and boots here and there. For Krell, the white was the base, but in this case, on this particular white here, I'm not changing those boots from brown to white. I'm just leaving it as it is and see how it works. Spoiler alert, it did work quite well. Now we're gonna work onto the weapons. So it's gonna be three layers. Lamenter's yellow is gonna be the base color. All the weapons are gonna be painted with this. After this, I'm going to proceed with Cassandra yellow. Unfortunately, I forgot how to record on my camera. So I'm gonna show you an example. With Warp Lightning Cannon, I do the last layer. And as you can see, contrast color, once again, is too thick, so I water it down a little bit and just paint a glaze on top of Cassandra Yellow. That way you can see Lamenter's Yellow, Lamenter's Yellow with Cassandra Yellow, and the last one with Warp Lining. I'm darkening now the gray areas that I just painted with Basilican uh, Gray, and that way we have a nice black with nice highlights in gray. I also use it to darken some of the chain mail and some details here and there so they pop up a little bit more. So here we are, this is the base base painting. If you don't want to do anything else, this is just fine. Very good standard for tabletop, but I always go the extra mile, as you know. So let's see what I get to. Of course, I'm going to use my dear sepia from FW get it in the link below. Believe me, this is a game changer. I use this all the time. I'm gonna darken some areas like the wood because the grain is gonna be much much better, more attractive if I use this. Also I'm gonna put it in some places in the armor just to improve tonalities and to go into those creases here and there so I can make it, you know, more detail. The details go better with a little bit of shade. The weapons, on the other hand, I'm gonna highlight with flash kits yellow. If you don't have this and you just have yellow inks and uh, white, you can paint it with white and then give it a glaze with any of those Lamenter's yellow or whatever. Probably Lamenter's yellow is the best option here. This technique needs a good brush. You need something sharp that holds a nice tip. I recommend the Da Vinci brushes as usual because they are cheap enough for you to buy them and you know what, sometimes you need to spoil yourself with a decent brush, but you don't need to break the bank. I repeat the process with all the swords and axes from the whites, and that's where I get here now. I think this is a little bit better than before, but still we can do a little bit more. It is here where I recommend that you highlight all the bones and the teeth with pure white, and by using Iron Breaker, you highlight the metals here and there. That is gonna make the miniatures pop up a lot and you're gonna fix a lot of mistakes with washes. For this next step, I want to improve the tonalities and the look of the bronze armors. And for that, I use Nihilac Oxide. I provided a link below if you want to buy yourself one. The trick here is less is more. You need to water it down a little bit so it flows into the recesses and don't overdo it, otherwise it's gonna make the armor look quite strange. I'm using Ethermatic Blue now because I painted Krell's eye sockets 
blue. I wanted to do an experiment and see how it will look. I think you could do this with every white or skeleton in your army as well, with the zombies if you want to do that. For some of them I painted the gems with a white dot and then I highlighted it with ethermatic blue to give it a tonality as if it was like a turquoise. And once ethermatic uh, dried out, I used a little bit of white in the middle of the eye socket. In here I'm using Teradon Turquoise, and I wanted to use this color in order to create an interesting effect on the gems by darkening the top corner. On Krell, around the eye sockets, I'm gonna put a little bit to create a light source effect. The miniatures are now basically finished. I do the bases like I did with my zombies, you can see that on the previous video. And here I'm gonna give them a coat of varnish, spray varnish. So first I'm gonna use Tester's Gloss Coat. Gloss varnish makes it very nice, it is quite hard. As you can see a little bit goes a long way. And after they dry, I'm gonna give them a second coat now with dull coat to kill that shine and to protect them even further. Not gonna lie here, I enjoyed painting these miniatures quite a lot. These miniatures are Reaper Bones, and in my opinion, they are some of the best miniatures out there. Mostly for gamers, those of you who play Dungeons and Dragons or other fantasy role-playing games, or if you want just <laughs> miniatures that are basically indestructible, this is a very, very good choice. You can paint them and throw them to a wall, and they will come unscathed. They are outstanding. I really like those old Warhammer Whites, those are some of my favorite miniatures ever, and this is the second Krell figure I ever painted in my life. I enjoyed the first one, I enjoyed this second one, I had a lot of fun painting these miniatures, and I really hope that you enjoy watching my video. If you are interested in learning how to paint more miniatures using this technique, this method of washes, where as you can see you don't need to know much about mixing paint or anything like that, you just put the colors in place, this is your channel then. So please subscribe, give me a like if you enjoyed the video, give me a dislike if you didn't, and I really 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 hope you come back again. Thank you for watching, this is Miguel signing out, bye!